really feel tonight we need to begin to lift our voices let's just begin to lift our voices we don't need words on a screen to worship the king of kings in this place tonight just begin to lift your voices let's worship him tonight let's make a heavenly sound tonight
I want you to turn with me to Isaiah and the 43rd chapter. Isaiah in the 43rd chapter. And we're looking. I gotta find it myself first. Let me tell you, and my team know I do this every time, but I don't use a wobbly Bible. You know, evangelists stand on the stage and they wobble Bibles about. Come on, smile for me, Tina. Smile, come on. Wonderful, good girl. I don't use a wobbly Bible. I use a Bible by iPad. And Apple. Oh yeah. And what is cool about this, actually, you can have three or four Bibles all side by side, and you can quickly go to another one really quick. You'd have a mountain of Bibles to do that if you did it the other way. I use modern technology because I'm a very modern chap. Isn't God wonderful? Are you having a good time? Hallelujah. Read with me. Isaiah, the 43rd chapter. By the way, I'm going to embarrass you now. If you haven't got your Bible, put your hand in the air. Why? 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 Oh, yes. You see? Isaiah, the 43rd chapter. We're going from verse 1. Let's just pray for these gifts and offerings. Father God, just raise your hands in the air with me, will you? Oh, you haven't got, excuse me, girls, they haven't given theirs yet. Father God, I give you the honor and the glory. Thank you so much for these gifts, Lord, these gifts and offerings. And I pray in Jesus' name that whoever has sown into this ministry, it comes back to them many fold, Lord, in Jesus' name. Pressed down, shaken together, and running over. Amen. And amen. Thank you. Isaiah and the 43rd chapter, verse 1. It says this. But now, O Jacob, listen to the Lord who created you, O Israel. The one who formed you says, do not be afraid, for I have ransomed you. I have called you by name, and you are mine. When you go through deep waters, I will be with you. When you go through rivers of difficulty, you will not drown. When you walk through the fire of oppression, you will not be burned up. The flames will not consume you, for I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. I gave Egypt as a ransom for your freedom. I gave Ethiopia and Saba in your place. Others were given in exchange for you. I traded their lives for yours because you are precious to me. You are honored, and I love you. Isn't that a great word? Thank you so much, guys. Awesome. Dave Bilber and his band will be back very soon. Isn't that an awesome word? Yeah, give them a round of applause. They deserve it. We're playing with leads here. Isn't that, though, in Isaiah, an amazing word? And on the face of it, when you read it, you think to yourself, oh, that's a great word. That's a fantastic word. But tonight I'm going to break it down for you. And we're going to look at this bit by bit. And I believe in Jesus' name that because of it, 
your life's going to change. Tonight, when you leave this place, and I'm not talking about a few of you, and I'm not talking about the blessed ministry team who are sitting in the front. Thank you so much for the work you're doing. I'm talking about every single one of you will leave this place tonight, I believe, in Jesus' name, changed. Let me tell you, I don't know what's happened tonight. This place was supposed to be full. We had distributed tickets to fill this place and two overflows outside. Those people are not here. I don't know the reason why, but God does. God knows why they're not here. Maybe it's because the football's on. Monteverdi and England are playing, as I speak, for the qualifier of Europe 2012. Who cares? Actually, I do. <laughs> I really do. <laughs> and we wouldn't have done this date had I known they were playing, but I didn't, but never mind. Anyway, we're looking at Isaiah. We're looking at the 43rd chapter. And on the face of it, when you read it, when you read it in a daily devotional, when you read it in your quiet time, you think, oh, that's a lovely word. But watch this. Verse 1 says this. But now, O Jacob, listen to the Lord who created you, O Israel. The one who formed you says, who's speaking? It's God talking. The Holy One of Israel is about to speak to you. He's about to impart words to you. How many of you have gone through your life and thought, do you know what? The Lord never, never ever speaks to me. Honestly, I pray regular, and the Lord doesn't talk to me. I wonder why. Could it be that you are not studying his word? Could it be that you are not spending time in his presence? Could it be that your separation from him is so large that he can't hear you any longer? I don't know what the situation is, but I know this. When I look at this passage, the Lord Almighty himself is conversing with me. And tonight, beloved, he's going to converse with you. But now, O Jacob, listen to the one who created you, O Israel, the one who formed you, the one who made you, the one who made you like you are, the one who made each and every one of you individual in every possible way, the one, the one who made you and said, look in the mirror and have a look at the wonder of what I've made. Did I make a mistake? There are many Christians, beloved, who cannot look in the mirror. They cannot look in the mirror because they do not recognize that what they see in the mirror is that which God has made. And I'm not talking about the outside necessarily. I'm talking about the inside. You see, when the Lord made me, he didn't want me to eat kebabs and bacon and beans and sausages and, oh, don't, I'm starving actually. Double egg, bacon, sausage, beans, tomatoes, and black pudding. Oh, yes, please. But you see, when the Lord made me, he didn't, he didn't want me to eat that stuff. He'd already provided food that I should eat. And that's why got a bit of a tum. Our fault. But what God made on the inside is what's special. What is on the inside of you is what is special. And the Lord would say to you, just look at what I've made. The one who formed you says, do not be afraid, for I have ransomed you. I've called you by name, and you are mine. When he says, I have ransomed you, do you realize the captivity that you were in? Do you realize that had the Lord Jesus Christ not come into your life, the pain and the suffering would have continued, only it would have been worse. Now that you are with the Lord, now that he lives inside of you, now you are a part of him, you have been set free. But who wants to claim 
that freedom? Do you want to claim that freedom? Because people still say to me on my TV show and my radio show, constantly they say to me, I am in bondage. How can you be in bondage if you have given your heart to the Lord Jesus Christ? How can you be in bondage? It's impossible, beloved. You cannot be in bondage anymore because of his death on the cross. You've got the right to say, Lord, what I did was wrong. I am so sorry for what I've done. Forgive me now in the name of Jesus and you are forgiven. But what do we do? I asked the Lord Jesus Christ to forgive me. He forgave me. Only I'm in trouble again. If you read Psalm 40, David was in that place. He's saying, thank you, Lord, for getting me out of this pit. You are wonderful. You are glorious. And then he goes on to say, but you know that I worship you. And you know that I praise yourself. I, I praise you, Lord. And by the end of the psalm, he's back in the pit again. It's in a revolution. It goes round and round and round. And when are we going to get off this treadmill, beloved? When are we going to get off this treadmill and recognize the Lord Jesus Christ for exactly who he is and what he's done for us? And what he continues to do for you. Earlier on I was saying that this world is in economic meltdown. They're using the term meltdown now. They are actually using that term. Meltdown. Ask me if I'm scared. Pardon, I come here. Uh, no. I'm not scared at all. And that's not because I'm a multimillionaire and I live in a massive, massive house in Buckingham, in fact. Because actually that's not the case. I live near Basildon. And actually, I'm not rich at all. But I don't care because I know that the Lord has his hand on my life and I know that the Lord is in charge. The Lord says halfway through verse 43, he says these words, do not be afraid. How many of you are afraid? Doesn't matter what it is. If you're afraid, stand up. Stand up right now. Come on, be brave. I know there's lots of you. Stand up if you're afraid. There you go. There's a couple there. There's hundreds of you here. Come on, up you get on your feet. If you're afraid of anything, stand up. Stand up quick, come on, come on, come on. Right, so if I bring a herd of spiders in here, no ladies are gonna jump up. <laughs> oh my gosh, they'll be on their feet going, oh, get it away from me, it's horrible. The Bible is saying these things to you, the people who are standing up, who are honest enough to stand up. The Bible's saying this, do not be afraid. Take your seats. Take that word because it's for you. Do not be afraid. And then the Lord goes on to say, for I have ransomed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. I could stop right there. I could sit down. After you're probably saying, oh, please do. But I could stop right there. I could sit down and there is a word. Don't be afraid. You've been ransomed. You're mine. You belong to God. Your name is written in the Lamb's book of life. When you pass from this world, beloved, you are going to glory. Blimey, you sound really pleased. You are going to glory. Yeah, amen. Yeah, oh, all right then. I suppose I'll have to play golf all day. See you around, Lord. And guess what? I'm going to have to worship. I tell you what, when you worship down here on earth, we've been worshiping tonight, hasn't it been awesome? Hasn't it been amazing? No offense to you guys, but when we get to glory, the worship is going to be a tad better. The choirs of angels I can't wait for. Can you not wait for the choirs of angels singing glory, glory, glory? Holy is the Lamb of God! 
Oh, I know. Anyway, I have ransomed you. I've called you by name, and you are mine. I've taken you out of the pit of hell. I've bought you from Satan. You no longer belong to him. I've purchased your life. And this is Isaiah prophesying. And you know how God did that? By sending his only precious son, Jesus Christ, to the earth to die like a criminal. Actually to be executed like a criminal. To be hung on the tree like a criminal. To have nails driven into his hands like a criminal. To have nails driven through both his feet like a common criminal. To have a spear thrown in his side like a criminal. And before all that, he was flogged, scourged 39 times like a common criminal. And if you can imagine the pain that Jesus went through for you and I, you would be shouting and cheering, knowing that you belong to him. It's awesome. And do you know what? That's verse one. That is verse one. Let's go to verse two. It says this, when you go through deep waters, I will be with you. When you walk through rivers of difficulty, you will not drown. When you walk through the fire of oppression, you will not be burned up. The flames will not consume you. Can someone pass me a tissue, please? Because I'm finding it hard to see now. Thank you very much. Not because I'm in floods of tears, because I'm sweating, I'm afraid. Sorry, I live in Hampshire. It's perspiring. That's what I'm doing, perspiring. Beloved, you are going to get into trouble. Whatever you do in your life, you are gonna get into trouble. I don't know what it is you're gonna do. I have no idea what you're gonna do. I don't know whether you're going to be caught nicking something from a shop. I don't know if you're going to swear at someone when you shouldn't. I don't know if you're going to be getting angry with somebody as you're driving along the road. I have no idea what's going to happen to you. I don't know if you're going to go through a bereavement. I don't know whatever trouble is going to come to you, but trouble will come to you. That is a given. I don't care if you're the most successful, most uh, important person in the world. The Queen has troubles, believe you me. She says she had a, a year, an anus horribilis, when Diana was alive. Whatever the troubles are, you're going to go through them. The Lord doesn't say, if you go through troubles, he says, when you go through troubles. He then goes on to say, I will be with you. You're not going to be alone. But guess what? If you want to be alone, I'll back off. And you can walk through this alone, completely alone. I'll walk away. Actually, he never does walk away. He's always there. It's us that walk away. But what he's saying is, when you go through the rivers of difficulty, he says, you will not drown. But guess what? Your enemy will say this to you. Your enemy will say, you're going to drown. And it's usually in a deep voice over voice. You're going to drown. 
but you're not. Do you know what I constantly say to people? I say to them, why don't you do yourself a favor and tell Satan exactly what his future is? And if you want to know about that, read Revelation 20. You'll find out what his future is. It's not great, to say the least. The victory, beloved, is ours. The victory is won. Gosh, I would have thought you would have been saying hallelujah to that. Can you imagine it on a battlefield and the army have been fighting and fighting and the general stands at the front of them one day and says, do you know what? The victory is ours. We've won. And they go, yeah, yeah, all right. Yeah, yeah, pretty good. Where's the pub? Don't you think they would say a little bit more than that? Let's hear it then. That's better. When you walk through the fire of oppression, again the word when, 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 when. Say the word when. And again. And again. When you walk through the fire of oppression, you will not be burned up. The flames, beloved, will not consume you. Isn't that great? Isn't that just so great? The flames will not consume you. And then in verse 3 he says, For I am your God. Say that with me. For I am your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. Just in case you didn't know who he was, he says, I'm your God, I'm the Holy One, and I'm your Savior. Just to make sure that you understood that. For I am your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. Then watch this. I gave Egypt and Ethiopia in your place for your freedom. I gave Sabah in your place. Look at those lands. Think about those lands. Think about what he gave. But we know what he gave. He gave the Lord Jesus Christ as a sacrifice for your sin. That's what he did. He gave his only son. And that today, after many years of being a Christian, still blows my mind when I think what he actually did. Because I know this, if you were the only person in the world, Jesus would have done exactly the same. There would have been no difference. He would have done it just the same. And that is why, beloved, you are supposed to be out there on the streets. You're supposed to be saying to people, do you know who the Lord Jesus Christ is? Do you know where you're going unless you believe in him? The Lord says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but by me. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but by me. I'm not being harsh. I'm telling you the reality, what Scripture says. I am not going to preach a gospel to you that doesn't come out of this book. I refuse. I will not compromise. I will not twist it. I will not change it to make it look and sound better. I am going to preach what is in this word and tell you what is in this word. Why? Because it is the truth. And the truth will, the truth will set you free. Amen. Others, verse 4 were given in exchange for you. How does that make you feel? Others were given in exchange for you. Do you know what? I was at a, a service some years ago in Sunderland, actually, in the Northeast. Why I? Bonnie lad, have we got any Newcastle people in? No, we haven't. We got any English people in? We got any Irish people in? 
Have we got any Welsh people in? Have we got any Scottish people in? Oh, that's beautiful. Let me just find out where some of you are. How, I want to find out the furthest, actually, who the furthest person away has come to travel to this conference. Anybody come from Europe? Stick your hand up. Anybody? Well, I'm, I'm, I'm already knowing then. That my, oh, this lady here, where have you come from? Oh, yes, this lady here has come from France. Give her a round of applause. Uh-huh. That is wonderful. But I know my own precious daughter has come from, I'll give you a clue. Hello, how do you do? It's the way they speak in Norway. She's from Norway. Where are you, Tash? Stand up, sweetheart. Oh, she's gone outside. She's feeding the baby. Oh, absolutely. She's feeding the little baby. But she's from Norway. Anyway, let's move on. Others were given in exchange for you. I remember I was at this conference in Sunderland. It was amazing. And at this particular conference, the guy was preaching and there was ministry. And there was five bunches of ministry. And do you know what? I had to go up for every one. I had to keep coming up. I'd go back to my seat and say something else. And I'd go, oh, no, you're joking. I had to get up, come back, and do it again. Five times! I think the Lord was trying to tell me something. Anyway, the guy who was preaching was a guy called Marc Dupont. And Marc Dupont happened to say this. He said, 20% of the people in this auditorium will die because of their faith. 20% of the people in this auditorium will lose their lives because they are Christians. 20%. And my point was this. I was wondering who was saying, oh, Lord, let it be me. Or how many were saying, oh, Lord, let it be him. Really, 20%. But it's an awesome statistic when you think about it because people, beloved, all over this world are dying because of their faith. They are not compromising. There was a case not that long ago where this guy refused to compromise. They just said, all you've got to do is say, I'm not a Christian anymore. Just say those words and you're free, you can go home. And he said, no, shoot me. I'm not going to do it. Why? Because my Lord Jesus Christ gave his life for me. <laughs> Others were given in exchange for you. I traded their lives for yours because, watch this, you are precious. How many of you believe that you are precious? Stick your hands up. How many of you do not believe you are precious? I'm glad you didn't put your hands up because you'd be right down the front now, that's for sure. <laughs> you, beloved, are precious, every single one of you. I was talking at the beginning of this message about looking in the mirror and how awesome that is. Looking in the mirror and knowing what God has made. You are precious. What is the most precious possession you think that anybody could own? Could it be the Star of India Diamond? Could it be that? What, it could, what could it be? My car? I don't know. My car's pretty nice. What could be the most treasured possession that you have? Think about it. Your children. Hands up those who are parents. Stick your hands up. Okay, watch this. Would you, alight, uh, would you allow one of them to die in your place? If you would, stand up. Hallelujah. Think about preciousness. Think about how precious Jesus was to God when he gave him up to be crucified. You are precious. You're more precious than a diamond. Do you know that? You are so precious. You are God's precious possession. I traded their lives for you because you are precious to me. I love this. You are honored. 
Think about this word, honor. How do we honor someone? Let me tell you. There's only one person in this country, really, that we honor, and that's Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II. It's her. And if she were here now, if she were to walk in that building, what would you all do? Look around and go, oh, it's Liz. Okay. <laughs> all right, Liz, how you doing, love? We'll come round the house for a cup of tea later. All right, cheers. Blimey, I didn't know I was bald. <laughs> I've just noticed I'm, I've got a bald bit. <laughs> well, well, well. I am sure when I go to the hairdresser, the hairdresser keeps cutting that bit. I don't know why. I do say to her every time, will you please stop it? Because it's making me look a bit like a monk and I don't like it. In fact, can you stick some of the bits off that you stick it back on? Anyway. That is what is the Lord, the, the Lord is. We, we're looking for someone who is honored. And the Queen, Queen Elizabeth II, is honored. She is honored. If the Queen were to come here, then we'd have to have a red carpet down here, or here. There'd have to be a red carpet. That's the way it is. Okay? What else? Well, you cannot turn your back on the Queen. You can be sent to the tower if you do that. It's against the law. It's against the Constitution. You cannot turn your back on the Queen. You cannot sit in the Queen's presence unless she asks you to. You can't go in her front room and say, Cool, blimey, Liz, I could do with a cup of tea, love. And sit down in an armchair, put your feet up. That doesn't happen. So when you leave her present, you have to back away from her. Okay? You cannot... Uh, call her your majesty more than once you call her your majesty when you first meet her you then call her ma'am which rhymes with ham it's constitution that's what you got to do you got no choice that's what you've got to do why because she's honored you can't sit in her presence as i said actually you can't sit in the presence of a high court judge either because she represents the queen. It's amazing. And she is the one who is honored in this country. Are you hearing me when I say that the Lord says to you tonight, beloved, you are honored. I won't turn my back on you. Thank you, Lord. That's prophetic. The Lord has just given me that. You are honored, and I will not turn my back on you. You are precious, beloved. You are honored. And then he says to you, I love you. Do you know, he doesn't say, I love you. He says, I agape you. There are three words in the Greek language. Eros, philio, and agape. I probably said them wrong, but I don't care. It's almost like that. Eros, filio, agape. Eros, man and a woman. We love each other. Oh, darling, I love you. I love you so much. Two friends, they meet. Hello, my old China. It's lovely to see you. I love you. I really love you. Big hug. That's filio. And agape is, do you know what? I don't love you at all. You make me sick. Get out of my sight. But do you know what? I love you. And whatever you say to me, my love for you is only going to increase day by day by day by day. Because, beloved, I agape you. I want you to stand up, turn to your neighbor and say, I agape you. I agape you. 
and sit. Dave, if you're around your keyboard player, please. Or somebody on the keys, Andrea, do you want to come play? What you just said to each other is I agape you. Do you know what? You don't. You absolutely don't agape each other. And let me explain it why, because this is the important part of this message, beloved. Many years ago, or a few years ago, the Lord said to me, tell my people about my love. Because the Lord's love hit me for seven days and did not stop. No, whatever I did, the Lord's presence wouldn't leave my side. He loved me. He cared for me. He put me on his knee. He held me in his arms. I cried and cried and cried for seven whole days. And at the end of it, the Lord said to me, tell my people about my love. And that's exactly what I'm doing tonight, beloved. I am telling you about his awesome love. I'm telling you about his agape love. He says to you, you are precious to me. You are honored. And I love you. I agape you. You see, we don't understand agape. How many times I've heard people say, do you know what? I love that person unconditionally. Nonsense. You don't. Because, beloved, there's always conditions attached to when we love. And those conditions are, I love you if you love me. And if you don't love me, sorry, but I don't love you no more. Would you agree? Yes or no? Say amen. There is conditions. And the one who sets those conditions is Satan, beloved. And we have to love the way the Lord tells us to love. Do you know, husbands, love your wives as Christ loves the church. That's what we're commanded to do. And I don't think there are many husbands because they're all watching football. I know, sad, isn't it? But the Lord loves you. He says to you tonight, you are precious to me. You are honored. And I love you. And the Father said to me, I want you to tell my people about my love. And that is exactly what I'm doing. And what I want you to do now is I want you to get out of your chair. And I want you to run to the front to receive his love. Let's go, quick. Let's go. Come and receive his love in an awesome, awesome way. Come and know who the Father is. Come and know that he is your dad. We have been worshiping in such a powerful way tonight. We have been loving the Lord in such a wonderful, wonderful way. And now, beloved, comes payback. The Lord says to you, you are honored. You are precious to me. And I agape you. Before I pray, if you know the person that is next to you, I want you to move away from that person. I want you to go another place around, mix yourselves up so that who you're standing by, you don't know at all. You've never met that person before in your life. Just move around. When you've done that, I want you to turn to that person who's next to you. I want you to put your arms around them and say to them, the Lord loves you. He loves you so much that he gave his son for you. Father! Here are your people, Lord. These awesome, awesome people. And I pray now, in the mighty name of Jesus, that you would let your love fall. Now, in Jesus' name. Take the Lord's love now. 
as it comes down on you and it changes your life and makes you brand new. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. If there are tears, let the tears come. Those tears are good. We even went out and bought bags and bags and boxes of tissues. We got thousands of them. We are not short of tissues. Just let those tears come in Jesus' mighty name. You are so precious. The Lord says, you are so honored. And he says, I love you. I love you. I believe somebody in this audience, I don't know who it is, their relationship has just ended. This person's relationship has just ended. I'm not sure if it was for a long time, but this relationship has ended and it has left you bereft. And you think it was your fault. And you don't think it's possible for anyone to love you. And you've been rejected. The Lord says to you tonight, you are not rejected. You are mine. Who is that person? Stick your hand up. Who is that person? Where? This lady here. Thank you, Lord Jesus. And she's right down the front. The Lord says to you, my darling, you are precious to him. He loves you. And you are his. You don't need that relationship. What you do need is the Lord God Almighty in your life in such a precious way. Thank you, Father, for this lady. In Jesus' mighty name. Stick your hands in the air, all of you, and say, send your love, Lord. Send your love to me now. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. We are standing on holy ground. I've said this all night, and I'll say it again. The presence of the Lord is so tangible. Just grasp it now with both hands. And let your life be completely transformed because you know, beloved, you know when you walk out of this door, you are precious. You are honored. And he loves you. He says to you, beloved, you are precious. You are honored. And I love you. The Holy Spirit's anointing is falling all over this place right now. Just receive it. Raise your hands in the air and give glory to the Lord. Let's sing. We're standing on holy.
are standing on holy ground, beloved. And what does that mean? That means you're standing on holy ground. If indeed you are standing on holy ground, then you know you are in the presence of the living God. You are in his presence right now. And he says to you, beloved, do you know what? You think you've failed. You think you've got it wrong. You think you've made mistakes along the pathway. You think you're wrong. But let me tell you, you are precious to me. You are honored. And I love you. I love you with everything in me. I love you so much I sent my son Jesus to save you. He is awesome. This indeed, beloved, is holy ground. Just say thank you to the Lord. And I want you to do something. All next week, I want you to say these words to the Lord. I want you to say, thank you, Lord. Don't ask him for anything. Don't stick a petition between him. Don't give him a shopping list and just say, Lord, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Jesus Christ be with you and remain with you always in the name of Jesus. Amen and amen.